Chapter 47, Chapter 7, Part 3 King Shroud's Fortress 12 o'clock midnight Deep underground, in the cellar of the fortress, seven heroes were slumped inside a cell, their heads hanging in defeat, not a word spoken among them. They knew they should be looking for a way to escape, but after what had happened a few minutes ago, none of them had the heart to try anymore. It seemed as though there was a grey cloud hanging over their heads. And to be honest, they were all still dealing with the shock. They were almost too afraid to even open their mouths. For the longest time, the only sound in the room came from an echoing, dripping noise coming from somewhere above their heads. Poor! Poor Gumblain, Stubba finally spoke up. I feel so bad for him. Me too, Hanner sighed. I mean, he was a jerk, but... He kind of had a good reason, hey? If only he had said something to us, said Maisie, gazing through the bars and looking guilty about something. We could have done something for him. I never once imagined that he blamed us personally for everything that's happened to him. Ferdinand lifted his head up. But, uh, we weren't guardians when all that stuff went down, were we? I don't reckon he really cares about that, Snatchel muttered. Of course, nobody was more miserable at that moment than Mario. He was hardly even listening to his partners talking. Gumblain's last words to him were still ringing in his ears, drowning out everything else as he sat gazing into his lap. The worst part was, Mario knew all of it was true. He couldn't deny it after having it thrust in his face like that. Gumblain had been something completely foreign to him, a partner who wouldn't open up to him, a partner who refused to get along with him. he had had no idea how to deal with something like that. So he hadn't. he had just pushed it to the back of his mind the moment Hanner joined the group. The truth was. Maybe he was a little spoiled. He was just so used to being a hero, so used to being adored by everyone, that having just one person who reviled him so openly was more than he could handle. And he had been so busy worrying about that, he hadn't stopped to think that maybe Gumblain was having bigger problems. You know, my little bro once went on an adventure, and he had three partners who didn't like him, he finally said, giving a sad ironic smile. I never really gave it any thought, but looking back, I have no idea how he did it. He sighed, gazing at the floor. He handled it better than I have been, that's for sure. His partners had all turned to look at him when he started talking. Mario, please. Said Maisie, looking concerned at his state. I know Gumblain said some hurtful things, but you can't let it get to you like this. But he was right. He was. About everything. He ran his hand over his face. I neglected him. He needed me, and I just threw him to the side. I can't believe I've been so selfish. Mario, come on. This isn't all your fault and you know it. Hannah said firmly, putting her hands on her hips and looking him square in the eye. Even if Gumblain was right. And I'm not saying he was. He was wrong to just leave us like this. Where? Where is he even going to go? Asked Dilia, looking concerned for him. He can't get back to Saluna Town. He probably can't even get out of the fortress without someone finding him. We're gonna go look for him, aren't we Mario? Asked Stubba, gazing up at the plumber with worry in his eyes. We're not gonna leave him here, are we? It almost broke Mario's heart to see the look on Stubba's face. Even after all this, he was still so innocent. And yet Mario couldn't forget that he still had two parents waiting back at home for him. Stubba. Right now, Gumblain doesn't really want to be found, he tried to explain. If he wants to come back, he knows where to find us. But until then, I think trying to look for him is just going to be a waste of time. And we don't got a lot of that, do we? Snatchel sighed, leaning against the bars and gazing out wistfully. That feller's gonna let his boss know where we are any minute now. Suddenly he straightened up, looking at something outside the cell with interest. Uh, Mario? You might want to have a look at this. Mario immediately turned and looked. At first he didn't even know what he was looking at, but then he realized Snatchel was staring at the torch hanging from the brazier closest to their cell. There was something strange looking about it, and Mario realized the bricks surrounding it were suspiciously off-color. It's a switch! He exclaimed, jumping to his feet. 
The torch is some kind of secret switch. I'll bet you anything that's our ticket out of here. He dashed over to the bars and peered through them, becoming more and more sure as he looked that he was right. His partners all looked curiously at the torch as well, though they didn't look as enthusiastic about it. Well, that's great Mario, but we'd have to pull that switch to activate it, Hannah reminded him. We're not exactly in a position to do that right now. Well, we'll see about that. Snatchel said with a cheeky grin, immediately grabbing his lariat. He concentrated hard and twirled his lasso for a moment before throwing it directly through the bars of their cell, tightening it around the switch and giving it a yank. There was a loud, creaky groan, and the bars of the cell swung wide open. All right. We did it. Mario laughed, racing out of the cell along with his partners and feeling a huge surge of relief. Maybe they still weren't too late. Ha ha. I knew it. No prison can hold the incomparable Team Mario. Hannah laughed with her signature hammer twirl. Wicked. The bumpy borders were not meant to be contained, man. Ferdinand chuckled, looking very happy to be free. Mario quickly caught himself and turned to face his partners. All right everyone, first things first. Let's make sure King Shroud doesn't find out we're here. You all know what that means, right? His partners all struck mischievous grins, and he nodded. I thought so. Let's go. And so they raced out of the dank cellar and up to the main floor of the fortress, but not before Mario skidded to a stop at the sight of a group of sparkles hiding behind a barrel and hastily grabbed the luma on his way out. King Shroud is not going to be happy about this, the officer mumbled as he walked into a small, deserted room in the fortress and prepared to teleport away. As if anything else could go wrong tonight. I've got to let him know about Mario before it's too late. Whoa. Yeah, sorry about that, came a rather smug-sounding voice. The officer gasped and spun around to see that Mario's team had filed into the room behind him, striking battle stances and grinning in anticipation of revenge. You. But, how did you? Don't worry, we'll tell him you tried your hardest, said Mario. The ensuing battle was over in record time. After that, Mario wasted no time using the key they had found to unlock the nearest door leading back up to the battlements. As they ascended up into the watchtower, though, they weren't happy with what they saw. Oh no! Mario groaned. Marching around the battlements were at least double the amount of patrols there had been before. And no doubt they were all on the lookout for Mario's group. There was no way they could safely make their way across. Shoot! Come on guys, we can stay up here, he muttered, hastily ushering his partners back downstairs before they were caught. He was sure he saw several of the guards turning their heads in his direction, but luckily the group made it down just in time. That was close, Delia whimpered as Mario slammed the door behind them. Now what do we do, Mario? I thought going up there was the only way we could see the whole fortress. It was the only way, Mario groaned, leaning against a wall. But if they catch us again, they'll probably do a lot worse than lock us up. Ugh, this is no good. We have to get to the back now. We're almost out of time. Hey, don't sweat it, Mario dude, Ferdinand said reassuringly, not looking nearly as worried as he probably should have been. There's gotta be some other way through this joint. Snatchel gave him an exasperated glare. Oh really? What do you reckon we ought to do? Ferdinand shrugged. Just go with the flow, man. That's what I always do. Snatchel's eye started twitching. This is no time to be going with the flow. He shouted, grabbing Ferdinand and shaking him. Now, sweetheart, be nice, said Maisie, patting the irate cowboy on the back. Mario tried to tune them out as he racked his brain for an idea. All right, guys. I think we've only got one choice. We're going to have to go through half down here and half on top. If we can find an opening on the battlements where the guards can't see us, then we'll go through there. Otherwise, we'll just have to tough it out on this floor. His partners didn't look pleased about that, but reluctantly decided he was probably right. This was the only safe way. So they quickly set off through the lower level of the fortress, passing through the darkened hallways with the freight and tattered carpets and tapestries, looking for a place they could safely ascend to the battlements. Surprisingly, there weren't a lot of dark striders down here. Though Mario wasn't exactly complaining about that, seeing how they had just cleared out a whole hotel full of them. 
There were plenty of even scarier monsters lurking around, though, including the black wigglers and gargoyle-like creatures they had seen outside. There was no short supply of chain chomps either, adding to the feel of how thoroughly barricaded this place was. Hey! Where do you think you're going? Came a hissing voice. The group spun around to see that a black wiggler had just dropped down from the ceiling behind them and was now rising up on his hind legs, bearing a set of very sharp fangs. Ugh, these things are gross, Hannah groaned as they all stepped backwards. What are they even called, anyway? I have no idea, said Mario. Gumblain, can you? He froze. His partners turned to look at him. Mario, said Hannah, but he was still unable to move as he realized what he had just said. And as he was unable to give any directions, there was nothing stopping the black wiggler from lunging directly at the group. Eek! Stubba and Dilia screamed as he wrapped himself around them in the blink of an eye and tried to squeeze the life out of them. His other partners cried out and tried to come to their rescue, but with the lightning-fast whip of his lower body the wiggler sent them all flying backwards and crashing into the wall. No! Mario gasped, quickly snapping out of his funk. No, no, no! Oh no, what do I do? Whoa, Mario dude! Ferdinand cried, staggering backwards to join him. I think we could use a do over here. Mario grimaced. I think you're right. Without hesitating, they both grabbed hands and shouted square one. The wiggler stopped in confusion as a square-shaped frame of the battle scene suddenly cut itself out from their surroundings and started spinning around on its top, looking almost like the pages of a flipbook. Mario and Ferdinand gasped and steadied themselves, and realized to their shock that the wiggler had suddenly started moving backwards. As his partners got up from the wall, the creature dropped Stubba and Dulia and scurried away from them, like a tape being played in reverse. Finally the scene returned to normal, and Mario realized that the last round of the fight had just been undone. Whoa! Trippy, man, was all Ferdinand could say. Trippy, but useful, Mario decided. Now that he was paying attention, he and the group were able to make very fast work of the wiggler. Okay. I have no idea what just happened. Somebody wanna explain? Asked Hannah, though she quickly fell silent as she and the others turned and saw Mario. He still had a pale, slightly distant look on his face, remembering what had happened to distract him in the first place. Are you okay, Mario? Stubba asked worriedly. Mario sighed and looked down at him. I'm fine, Stubba, he said, not really sounding very fine. I'm sorry about that, everybody. His partners looked sympathetic. We're all worried about him too, Mario, Delia assured him. But he wasn't your responsibility, Mario thought. I know, Delia. I'm just worried that we haven't seen him at all. I'm afraid he got captured, or worse. I'm sure he's avoiding us, Mario, Maisie sighed. Anyway, until he decides to come back, I'm sure he'll be fine. He knows all about fending for himself, doesn't he? Mario managed the faintest of smiles. Yeah, I suppose he does. They set off again after a moment, but Mario couldn't get Gumblain out of his head. He desperately wanted to see his first partner again, and not just to know he was all right. He wanted to fix things. Now that he was so aware of all the mistakes he had made, he just wanted the chance to make everything right with Gumblain. He wanted to believe that it still wasn't too late. Mario's plan ending up working better than he had thought. The group traveled through both levels of the fortress, though they spent most of their time walking through the lower level. Every time they had the chance, they'd climb up to one of the watchtowers and see if there was a place they could sneak past the guards on the battlements, and if there was, they'd race through as fast as they possibly could. Most of the enemies inside the fortress attacked in groups, but luckily, it was nothing Mario's team couldn't handle. Hanner was eager to take them out all at once with her electrifying bolt hammer, and Snatchel often joined in with his new double dash skill, charging through the enemies and sending them flying like bowling pins. It wasn't any easier up on the battlements. Not only did they have the patrols to constantly worry about, they found themselves frequently having to contend with the bullet bill blasters lining the walls of the fortress. Taking them out, as well as the rounds of bullet bills they fired out, was a very time-consuming task. At the very least, one of the watchtowers they were hiding out in turned out to have a luma inside of it. 
and Mario vaguely realized as he collected it that this must have been the very last one. He had rescued enough of them now to upgrade all of his partners two times. It's really almost over. He thought, and the thought was a strange one. At one point, the group had to walk across a bridge taking them directly above the inner courtyard of the fortress. Mario had to will himself not to look down, for directly below them were rows upon rows of monstrous creatures marching in formation, chanting out discordant war cries. The plumber let out a shudder, growing more determined than ever to find that Sun Soul before King Shroud had the chance to unleash them on the rest of the world. All those guys down there. And the one guarding the Sun Soul is stronger than all of them, Delia whispered. Who on earth could be powerful enough for that? I don't even want to think about that, Mario grumbled. Finally, after what felt like forever, the group had safely navigated all the way to the back end of the fortress. They were lucky enough to find a sleeping Dark Strider slumped against the brick wall, and so Dolia quickly disguised them all and enabled them to walk right past the rest of the patrols and through the large wooden doors. Well, I think we know where the key is, Mario said once they were inside the room. There was a huge wooden treasure chest on the far end, but between it and them were several stone walls rising out of the ground at various angles, forming a sort of maze. Not only that, but lining the various pathways was a series spinning fire traps that Mario was very well versed with at this point in his life. King Shroud really doesn't trust his minions, does he? Hannah remarked. Oh hey, Mario. Check this out. Mario saw she was pointing at three big blue switches to their side. Two of them were on the ground, but one was elevated high up on a stone platform and would probably require Hannah's hammer throw to reach. Hmm. I wonder what these are for, said Mario, experimentally jumping on one. As soon as he did, the entire room began to shake, causing his partners to gasp and flail around. Mario turned and saw that hitting the switch had caused some of the stone walls to lower into the ground, but had also caused some other ones to rise up. Oh, great. He groaned. I bet we have to hit these switches in the right order so we open up the right path to the key, don't we? Ooh. That sounds like a fun challenge. Hannah said cheerfully, then noticed the weird looks she was getting from everyone else. Oh. Or not. After Mario and Hannah solved that truly gripping and exciting puzzle, the group walked down the zigzagging path they had opened up, frantically jumping over the spinning fire traps wherever they were found. Mario had to bust out his ultra hammer once to smash a metal block that had been placed in their way for good measure, and finally he raced up a small flight of stairs and had Ferdinand fly him over to the platform where the large chest was waiting. Well, here it is, he said quietly, opening it up and pulling out the large, rusty ancient key. This is what we've been looking for. He stood there for a minute, holding it in his hands as a strange feeling slowly came over him. He should have been excited or relieved, but somehow, he wasn't. He realized that this was it, the way the final Sun Soul was open, and there was no turning back now. Their last stand against King Shroud's forces was about to begin. And then what? He thought. Even if we find the Sun Soul, how do we ever get out of this place? How do we find Shroud? And Peach? How will I ever see her again? Peach. What if it's too late? What if I let her down, the way I let down? He glanced over at his shoulder at his partners, all too conscious of the one who wasn't there, and realized Peach was no longer the only one he was worried about. Using the same combination of luck and stealth that had gotten them this far, the group made their way back to the very front of the fortress, also finding a P-up, D-down batch with Snatchel's help. Finally, they arrived back at the deserted Great Hall, walking across the long rows of tables and over to the tightly locked door. It's going to be strange seeing the sun again after all this time. I can't wait to get out of this awful place, said Dolia as they all stood in front of the door. You ready, Mario? Mario nodded slowly, gripping the ancient key in his hands. Ready as I'll ever be. You guys ready? Absolutely, Maisie said confidently. Whatever's behind this door, I'm certain we can handle it. This is it, though. The very last Sun Soul, said Hannah, sounding a little uneasy. The strongest one of all. There's no way we're getting it back without a hassle. Well, it's a good thing hassling is what we're good at, Mario remarked. 
giving his partners one last look, seeing that they were all standing loyally behind him, ready for anything, he finally took a deep breath and turned around, slowly placing the key in the lock. This is really it. He turned the key, and with a loud series of clicks, the padlock suddenly popped open and clattered onto the floor. Without giving himself any time for doubt, Mario immediately pushed the door open and walked on through. The room that they stepped into was huge. As usual, the only source of light came from the braziers mounted on the walls, but the flames in this room were inexplicably burning black. Even so, the light was enough to illuminate the rows of spikes jutting from the walls, as well as the vast array of weapons lining every corner of the room. There was nothing the center but a wide open space, presumably meant for a battle. It felt suspiciously like they were in an indoor arena. They were the only ones in the room. So? Where is it? Asked Hannah as they all warily glanced around. The Sun Soul, I mean? Shouldn't it be in here somewhere? I'm not sure. Mario muttered, slowly reaching for his hammer. It was unnervingly quiet and still in the room, and he suspected something was about to happen. Surely they were about to find out who it was that was guarding this final Sun Soul. Guys, get ready for a fight, he suddenly said, stiffening and grabbing his weapon. I think we're about to see some action. Dolia was looking nervous. But who? Before she could even finish, she got her answer. Everyone gasped and drew together as a low, throaty noise suddenly filled the room, surrounding the group. It wasn't overly loud, but it sounded artificially amplified, and its sheer power seemed to send tremors through the room. Mario and the others quickly looked around, but the noise didn't seem to come from anywhere at all. What was that? Asked Stubba, looking frightened. It sounded almost like... Someone was laughing, said Maisie. And then Mario felt his resolve suddenly falter. She was right. It was somebody laughing. And he realized that he knew that laugh. He had heard it many, many times. But never like this. No. No, it can't be. A towering pillar of smoke rose up from the center of the room, spiraling around itself as it reached up to the ceiling and filled the room with a deathly chill. The entire party scrambled backwards in fright, staring at the pillar of smoke, afraid of finding out who or what was about to come stepping out. Except for Mario. He knew exactly who it was. But even as the smoke cleared away and the huge, lumbering form took a step into the room with enough force to make the floor shake, he didn't want to believe it was true. Be Bowser? He cried. Mario's age-old nemesis was towering over the heads of the group, nearly twice as tall as he should have been, but that was practically the last thing Mario noticed. He was more concerned with the fact that Bowser was somehow the same dark blue hue as King Shroud and the Dark Striders and his shell was jet black. His scales were sharper and more pronounced, his eyes were burning with an unnatural fire, and smoke came billowing out from under his feet every time he took a step. Searing black flames were licking from his mouth as he stomped toward the group, giving them a wicked grin that showed just how deadly serious he was. Mario. He laughed again, his voice distorted and booming and so inexplicably terrifying that all of Mario's partners, yes, even Snatchel, shrieked and cowered behind him. There you are, you puny pathetic little plumber. You have no idea how long I've been waiting for this. End of chapter.